I've been using geometry nodes wrong this entire time, and likely you have been too. It took me a long time to get to this stage, and in this video, we're going to completely reshape how we approach geometry nodes. So, hi, yes, hello everyone, I'm Gavin.js, let's get into it. Over the last couple of months, I've realized there are four levels that most people fall into with how they think about geometry nodes. In fact, not only do I know that these levels exist, I've gone through them myself. And starting out, it's all about just using geometry nodes, right? Which is what I mostly do, and I'd say most people out there do. You go in, you grab whatever piece of geometry, you make your node graph, and then you call it a day, right? There's usually a lot more that goes into a scene with your materials, different effects, your camera, what have you, what have you. But when it comes to just making the geometry, most people just have a geometry nodes modifier on their object and that's totally fine however we can do so much better than this so that brings us to level two and this is where i try to spend a lot of my time as well it kind of just depends on the project as to how i've approached things sometimes you just make all of the geometry in geometry nodes like in level one sometimes you use level two where you're actually making geometry in edit mode and then using your geometry nodes graph as a modifier to modify that geometry. This is where we get more into the generator territory and we're able to do a lot more interesting and dynamic things. A good example of level two is my video on making DNA in geometry nodes. There I talk about using a Bezier curve to change the shape of your DNA at will. This is a great example of modifying your geometry in edit mode and having your geometry nodes react to that. We can of course take this a step further by using collections and a combination of different objects to read and write data with our geometry nodes, but it's still just one modifier. That of course means we can take this even further. Instead of having all of our geometry be created by one node graph, or having one object that is the generator, again used with one node graph, we could have multiple different objects that use a much more simplified node graph. What do I mean by this? Recently I was working on a project where I wanted to animate a bunch of complicated geometry. And I realized I could go about this the way I normally do and instance a bunch of different pieces of geometry, like really build out the node structure so that it's creating all of this geometry for me before animating and doing all of the interesting stuff. Or I could simplify my node graph and give it all of the inputs that I need to achieve the desired results and apply that to multiple individual pieces of geometry. What makes this powerful is that I was able to cut out a lot of time from my process because I was no longer worried about creating all of that geometry in smart, complicated ways in geometry nodes. I could instead make a bunch of different objects, move them around at the object level, and then modify them in edit mode. That is, of course, what those two modes are for. Then all of these objects got the same geometry nodes modifier that had the parameters I needed for the animation I wanted. By reshaping what, how I was approaching geometry nodes, I cut out so much time from this project because I wasn't just trying to do this the same way I usually do and just think that, oh yes, proceduralism is best, have to do it with nodes, this is the best way. I, I don't need to do that. I need to keep in mind the final result. So after completing this project, it was a really good day. I had a lot of fun and I couldn't have gotten it done nearly as quickly if I hadn't have reshaped how I was thinking about things. I had a bit of an epiphany. You see, I have this other project that I've been working on for a while. I want to recreate the look of geometry nodes with geometry nodes. Let me explain. Basically, I want good graphics for my YouTube channel, and I want to be able to animate and show the nodes as I'm working with them in a more interesting way than just showing screenshots of my node graph or trying to capture my mouse clicking and dragging and moving things around. I want to do better than that, but 
the way that nodes are rendered in Blender, there is a lot of moving pieces, and in order to create the geometry for all of those little pieces, I need some way to recursively add the same geometry nodes. One idea I was exploring was writing a bunch of Python to create my own plugin to create dynamic geometry node networks to plug all of these custom nodes together, but I don't know enough Python offhand to really be able to build that well. So, after making this animation, I had the realization that I could make more modular geometry node graphs. So this project and the last project are what led me to level four, where we're using geometry nodes as modifiers. Gone are the days where we're just going to focus on the node graph and do everything in one node graph. We're not gonna worry about that. We're not gonna talk about making a whole bunch of custom nodes. Custom nodes are still gonna be a big thing. I'm not going to abandon that, but Instead, we really need to focus on the modifiers stack. Blender, I've realized, is built around the modifiers stack. If you've done anything in Blender, then you'll probably know that the modifier stack is the best way to achieve what you're going for in a non-destructive procedural workflow, which is why Geometry Nodes is part of that ecosystem of modifiers. So why don't we, instead of making one geometry nodes graph and apply that to everything, make our own ecosystem of geometry node modifiers? With this idea, what we can do is make our own modular geometry node modifiers instead of making our own custom geometry node groups. This will allow us to repeat the same action multiple times but with different inputs so that we get varying results however many times we want without just copy pasting nodes one after another after another to get that same result. We can also use this to pass data through. We can do we can do so many things. Oh my god, there's so there's so much we can do. But let me let me show you an example. So here we are in Blender and as you can see I've got an example of what I'm talking about. A 3D representation of what a node looks like in a node graph. The reason I need to build out this complicated system is because we have a bunch of different things that I want to repeat X number of times, but each one needs a different set of inputs, all of which have to be defined by the user. The best way to do this is with a modifier, but if we only had one set of geometry nodes, we'd only have the amount of inputs that we already set in those geometry nodes. Here, I want to have a dynamic number of inputs. The more sockets we have, the more inputs I should have to determine what that socket is going to look like. So what I've done instead is take the same set of geometry nodes and duplicate it over and over and over. You can see here where we select which geometry nodes we're using they all say socket except for this last one. So we're using the same network multiple times on the same object to get a recursive result. I'm not really going to walk through exactly how this works, like, but I'll, I'll show you the node group real quick. It's not terribly complicated. I actually have a custom node group inside of here that's a little more complicated. What it does is create the actual string geometry and chooses the socket shape and color. All of this enabled by the new menu switch because I really wanted to have text outlining what the different options are on this modifier. So we're able to choose if this is an input or an output, basically flipping left and right and giving us the spacing we need. We're able to choose if this is going to be a single value, so a circle socket, a field value, so our diamond socket, and then a field single value, diamond with a dot. Then we're able to choose our data type. So these are all of the different data types that are currently supported in geometry nodes. Then we also have our text size, and the Y offset, so a little bit of offset between each of our inputs. If we jump back out of this custom node here, we can see what this whole thing is doing. And 
basically what I've done is created additional geometry to carry data between each of our modifiers. That way we're able to do something here that affects the next modifier. The big thing in this case is our Y offset. Each of these sockets are going to have a different offset based on the Y size of this bounding box, which in this case, since they're all just strings, is the same, but if you have something like a vector, like we have on our points node here, there's a lot of Y offset. So we need to be able to adjust all of the following sockets, all of the sockets lower down on this node, by how much th that cumulative Y offset is, plus however much we're adding in for each one. God, I hope that made sense. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. <laughs> so getting back to the point, we need to create a single point on our first socket that will keep track of all of that data for the Y offset. That way in the next one, we're able to read that Y offset and instance the next socket below that Y offset. So we go through, add as many sockets as we want, and here I'll just duplicate that. So now we have a third vector string. That's not realistic, obviously. And I'm able to cho choose to be an output, because why not? We can change it to be a single value, and let's say it's an object output, because that makes sense. <laughs> Then we're able to adjust our Y offset so that things get weird if we adjust it to be lower. I'm still developing all of this. I'm just really excited and want to show you all. And then we're able to adjust the text size. And you can see all of these other sockets have those set to drivers. Those are be being driven by the text size and Y offset of this bottom modifier, which is for the box. So this gray box and the banner with all of this text here. Basically all of the other parameters that I've created so far for creating an entire node. There's a lot more I need to make, but this is what I've got so far. We're able to adjust these parameters that are acting as our drivers. We can adjust how wide everything is. So it defaults to seven. We can make it wider. We can make it thinner. What have you, what have you. We can toggle if it's 3D or 2D. Let me really zoom in so that you can see that. So yep, th 3D, 2D, which is really fun. And we can adjust how much we scale. So just fun little things for interesting visuals. I'm still developing all of this, but I really wanted to share the idea of creating multiple modular node groups to use as modifiers to create our own ecosystem of modifiers that can all work together, transfer data between them to make far more interesting and dynamic effects. I'm really excited about this. I think there's a lot of potential. It's not just a niche thing for this weird system I'm trying to come up with to recreate the visuals of geometry nodes. I've actually come up with a couple of different ideas for how to apply this. I've even run into another creator who's made their own ecosystem of modifiers to build buildings and do a bunch of things so that you can just throw together all of your modifiers and there you go. You have a whole building that can be customized to your heart's content which is another thing I was considering using this sort of an idea for. We could even make our own Boyd systems. If you really want to get into how Boyds work, make them yourself, create your own rules that don't exist in Blender as it stands, whatever you want to do there. We could use it to simulate biological systems. That's kind of weird and out there and way too complex probably for this sort of a system, but we could do so many things by creating modular node modifiers. So long as we understand how the data is being transferred, the world is our oyster. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful and you found this just as exciting as I have. Uh, if this has been helpful, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. It really helps out the channel more than you can know. And if you really want to see me continue to do this sort of work, develop nodes, develop modifiers, research all of the nodes as I've been doing, then 
consider going over to my Patreon. I've been talking about all of this over there for the last couple of weeks in a free public blog that I've been maintaining, and there will be more content coming soon on the paid tiers, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and if you found this helpful, you might also like my series on researching all of the nodes, so make sure to check that out too. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!